to Newsroom 18. I'm your host, Sabrina, and I'm super excited to share with you all the awesome small businesses we have for this week. Small businesses are what keep communities quaint and personalized, but the in-person need for small businesses has shifted due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I was able to meet with and interview so many awesome small business owners who shared their personal and business stories with me. Social media has become a great way to promote yourself and your business, which is why I asked you guys the question, what is your go-to social media app? And no surprise, there was a tie between Instagram and Snapchat. Now these are two very popular social media platforms that both focus on taking pictures, videos, posting things on stories for friends and families to see. However, Instagram is more widely used for business owners because you are able to have a shop and showcase your items more permanently on the actual app. Throughout all the interviews today, I'll be linking their websites as well as their social media tags in the description below. So make sure you go check those out. Remember how important it is to support small businesses in your community as well as online. Some ways to support businesses online that are free are following their content, liking, commenting, and making sure you share. If you post something on your story or share it even just to one friend, that can promote their content and their page so that even more people will be able to see it and possibly purchase their items. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love going to the beach. And what better to wear to the beach than a bikini? Now we're going to hear from a young fashion lover who decided to create a business called Tropical Society, where she makes and sells bikinis. Hi everyone, my name is Alma. I'm the founder and creator of the Tropical Society. The Tropical Society is a body positive um, apparel brand. So a little bit about me. I always loved fashion. It was always something I was super passionate about. Ever since I was little, I just, um, I just loved it. Like it was just, that one thing that I was just like, I could never stop like exploring, you know, I always, I, whether if it was sketching, like if you look above me, there's some of my sketches for my first collection. Um, but um, yeah, it was just something that I loved and I would make myself a lot of clothes sometimes. And yeah, I, I just really enjoyed it. So around um, the, this time last year, actually, I bought a bunch of graphic tees, like my whole style back then was just wearing oversized t-shirts and like some cool sneakers. That was all I was wearing back then. And um, I would buy graphic t-shirts and I would just tie dye them. And I'd wear it to school a lot, like almost every day, just to different t-shirts. I actually have one with me because I wanted to show you. Yeah, I just wear these t-shirts all the time and every time I'd wear one, people would always compliment me. So, I don't know, this is one of it, let me show you. This is one of the first one I made. If you look at my Instagram page, you'll see this shirt at, like last year. Anyways, yeah, I, I got compliments from about it and I was like, wow, why won't I just make something out of it? I started taking some cool pictures um, in Miami and Wynwood. It's just like this place is like cool full of photography so it really matched the vibe of the shirts um it's full of graffiti not photography but um yeah it just really matched the vibe of the shirts and i just posted some pictures on instagram i had some friends some friends took pictures of me i took pictures of friends and yeah i just started off by that during quarantine i had so much free time and since i love i really like sewing and stuff like that I always like if I would sew before I would just sew by hand or it wasn't like anything like too professional it was just like whatever so during quarantine I had all this free time and a lot of time to think like what I actually want to do in my life business wise and I just bought a sewing machine look I have this one right here this is the one I bought <laughs> this is my sewing corner but um yeah I just bought this sewing machine and I, I was just like I don't know let me go for it the first thing I did was making a bandana bikini this is not the first one i made but this is like what i'm what i make yeah this is it i have it in all in a bunch of colors on my website like over like a hundred i think because you could customize it and you could choose um you could mix colors you could choose like pink and baby pink or pink and blue and um you could also choose the back like these are the thongs ones but i have um ones with more coverage but i just don't have them with me but yeah, I started, I, I did that and I took some pictures, posted it on my page. 
Um, at first, I just made it for myself, and I really, I really enjoyed wearing it. So I thought, like, why won't I post it? That's when I decided to post about it and introduce it to. Back then, it was called the Tea Society because I was making only T-shirts, but now I changed it to Tropical Society because I want to extend it to more than just T-shirts. I probably am gonna do more like beach clothes and I don't know. We'll see, <laughs> but it's gonna be fun. It's definitely gonna be fun and. Um, I want my whole brand to be about body positivity because personally, I think that the image of models now, now it's getting better, but I think that over a year ago, it wasn't like that, or maybe a little more than a year ago. But I think that models, like to be a model, you'd have to be skinny and tall. And that's something like for my brand, I know that I want to do it body positive and I want all body types. Doesn't matter if you have scars, any, you could have anything like stretch marks, whatever. I think that it's beautiful and that's what I want my brand to project. So this is what the brand is about. And yeah, it's really, it's really something I enjoyed and I'm really glad that I chose to start my own brand. If you're, if you're watching this and you also want to start your own business, I highly recommend it. Like just not even, not even like your own business. If you want to do anything, I really think that you should start and just by doing something like even if it's like the smallest like thing even if it's just for you and if you enjoyed it maybe other people will yeah definitely just follow your dreams and do it and make sure to be consistent and don't give up like personally i had so many times that i was just gonna stop and like not do it with the tie-dye shirts and also this at one point like a couple months ago i, I almost stopped it but i'm glad that i didn't and if you're watching this you shouldn't too <laughs> And yeah, thank you so much. Bye. In regards to some current events, it seems as if we are living through history. Almost two weeks ago, a group of individuals stormed the Capitol as a form of protest to keep President Donald Trump in power. Due to this, there were over six lives lost, including those of police officers and citizens. On a more uplifting note, in regards to things happening in Washington, D.C., the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden will be occurring at 12 p.m. on Wednesday, November 20th, and I'm looking forward to tuning into that, and you should as well. We are certainly living through history, and it is important to stay educated on the current events, no matter which side you support. For decades now, shoes and sneakers have been the talk of pop culture. Now we're going to talk to a small business that sells sneakers. All right, my name is Khalil Spencer. I'm from Alabama, but right now I'm residing in Virginia, the 757 area. Um, I'm the CEO and owner of LaCash Clothing and LaCash Sneakers with a streetwear brand. Awesome. I'm a big fair fan of streetwear. How have you been reaching out to people to sell your products? Right now, we're just in the beginning stages, but my target audience, I'm going for the people that are in the trenches. I want the people that's out there in the trenches, like, they come from where I come from. Like, I want them to feel me. I want them to make clothes that make them feel good that you can wear in the mall. Like, I'm about to get ready to go to the mall now, so I got all my clothes in the mall. If I want to go to the club later on tonight, I can wear this to the club. They got a statement. On your Instagram, it shows a lot of sneakers. Are you really into sneakers and, you know, have you always been into fashion and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a big sneakerhead, and I tapped into the, the sneaker reselling business because I just, one day I was thinking, like, what can I do to make some money? And, like, and I was reading. I read a lot of books, and I was reading. It was like, go out to anything that's your passion. And you, when you go out to stuff that's your passion, you're going to automatically have love for it, and the money's going to come eventually. And I like fashion and shoes, so then I learned that the sneaker resale business was a billion-dollar market. So I just tapped into it. Awesome. And what can people do to help support your business? Um, anything. It's, people don't realize that when you, when somebody has a small business or they're starting out, you can just share their posts. You can react to their posts. You can like it. You can tell a friend about it. All those things don't cost nothing out of your pocket to support a small business. Right. So what are your hopes for this company? Do you hope to someday open up a storefront or is it more something you enjoy doing through online servicing? 
Oh, yeah. Oh, we got big goals, big goals. This year, goals are not as big as what I plan to see in the next 10 years. I want to go Met Gala. I want to go big, <laughs> big goals. Like, I want to go brick and mortar. Like, have me a storefront. I want to have one in L.A., New York, Atlanta, and Miami storefronts. Those are just some of the long-term goals I'm trying to get. Awesome. So do you have any examples of your products that you can show the viewers right now? These are some of my shoes that I have right here, inventory shoes. Right now, I'm rebranded. I think I'm going from the sneaker. I'm going to try to go to more of a women's luxury, reselling women luxury shoes. Awesome. Ruby Tom boots. We'll be dropping it sometime in the spring. I'm going to have the lime green. These are the slime ball green. Um, stack track pants and these are my black stack track pants this is the shirt that I have on now perfect the black Lacaz shirt on the back it says hustle like you still broke <laughs> then we have all money no love tea with the Lacaz at the bottom on the back it says it costs zero ninety nine to be loyal those will be dropping in the springtime of 2021 be on the lookout Perfect. So I really hope all your big hopes and dreams for your company come true. This is awesome. It's been great talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. As important as it is to support and be in the know of small businesses, big corporations are obviously a huge part of our everyday lives. Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, these are all companies that we probably use on a daily basis to stay connected and stay entertained. It was just in the news that Elon Musk, the creator and owner of Tesla, has now been announced the richest man in the world and his stock is selling at over $800 a piece. Tesla is known for being extremely high tech while being environmentally safe at the same time. Being environmentally safe is extremely important because climate change is a huge issue. Where you are living, you may not be experiencing the direct effects, but the Arctic and many polar bears and other animals are quickly becoming extinct due to the changing climate because of greenhouse gases and other environmental factors that we didn't realize were such a large contributor to the death of so many animals and species. If you would like to know more about climate change and what you can do to help this earth, please check the link in the description below. Now it is January right now and the perfect thing to wear in January in the cold weather are sweatshirts. Now we are going to meet with someone who embroiders and edits sweatshirts so they are more pop culturized. My name is Ye, Y-A-E, and I'm from Denver, Colorado. Awesome. And what is the name of your business that you've been promoting? Uh, I call it Majin Blue. Uh, it's based off of Majin Blue from uh, Dragon Ball Z. Awesome. And is it just online or can people go to a store for it? It's only online right now. I do plan on doing pop-up shops in a few cities every now and then, but Corona. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, what what exactly is your business and how did it get started? Um, I've always wanted to just make random art and just have it um, available to people that want it. So I always customize shoes, um, hoodies, pants, stuff like that. So I really wanted to start doing something like that. So with the anime hoodies that I posted on TikTok and it just blew up out of nowhere while I was asleep. So I woke up to like five, like, uh, 200,000 followers, it was ridiculous. It was crazy. Going from, like, 36 followers, it was ridiculous. Yeah, that's awesome. So, <laughs> clearly, social media has been a huge help to your business. Um, yes. How long have you been running your business? About three weeks now. So, I posted a video, and I had to get everything figured out. So, it's really been about, I had my first drop. My first release was on January 8th, so I guess about a week, if you want to call it from then, has been open. So, you're pretty new. How can people support you in the future? Um, just follow me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram, that's where I promote everything. Um, I'll be doing a lot of giveaways, a lot of um, just giving back, a lot of free stuff, stay engaged. I like to 
interact with my followers. That's like the best way to stay in touch with me. Right. And do you have any final touches you'd like to add? Any products you can show? Anything like that? Uh, this bad boy right here. This is the one. This is the original one I made the video in. Awesome. That has 2.7 million likes, I think. And then I will be releasing this one pretty soon. And there's another one that's doing pretty good right now. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very excited for everything that's going to happen in the future. Yeah, I'm excited for you as well. And I'm really glad that you're really taking off with this. So thank you so much for coming on here and talking with me. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Earlier in today's video, I mentioned a popular social media app called Snapchat. Now, Snapchat is popular for their photos, videos, and texts that disappear as soon as you send it and the other person opens it. Also on that app, when you post something on your story, it stays there for 24 hours and alerts you when someone screenshots it. So there really is no funny business on Snapchat. Their platform gained some heat when they entered the stock market at a very low price but fortunately, their stock has been going up along with other stocks in the market. This year in 2021, a lot of travel stocks are expected to go up due to the influx of people wanting to get out of their houses as the COVID-19 pandemic hopefully comes to an end. Now we'll be hearing from Antonella DeAngelis. She owns a theater company and we're going to talk to her about how the pandemic has affected her business. So my name is Antonella DeAngelis. I'm the owner and director of Theater Scrapbook. Uh, theater Scrapbook is a youth theater company located in Southern Rhode Island and Connecticut. And we provide after school programs, in school programs, camps, workshops, uh, master classes, uh, courses, stuff like that for different schools, organizations, um, in the communities. Their theater-based uh, programs, sometimes they're musical theater-based, sometimes they're just theater-based. We do all kinds of um, different things, I guess I should say. Awesome. So what inspired you to start this business or organization? It originally began in the 80s, in 1982. Uh, my dad started it as Westerly High School Theater Scrapbook Company. It's a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, <laughs> because when he started teaching in Westerly, there was no theater program. Mostly he would just do the spring musical. And then in 2013, then Barbara and I uh, started doing one spring musical for K through eight. So grades K through eight, we really don't go by age. We usually go by grades. We did it at Tower Street Community Center, which is currently closed. But um, at the time, it was, I know, <laughs> it was a community center that was open. And we did it there. So that way, it would be in Westerly, but it would be able to be open to anybody. Then, over time, throughout the years... I took over the company and made it into Theater Scrapbook because originally it was a different name, but now it's just Theater Scrapbook. And more people started reaching out to us and schools started reaching out to us. And so we started going to like different school districts, different private schools, stuff. We went to other community centers like YMCAs and stuff. And we did different things. For the most part, we're doing, you know, usually a dozen or more shows a year at different places. So you mentioned the fact that you do multiple shows at a time. How yeah. has the pandemic affected that in the sense of were you in the middle of any projects when the pandemic started or something like that? Wow, how hasn't it affected us? <laughs> so the thing that I always kind of say about our shows is we go mostly based on what schools are doing so that's as simple as if there's a snow day like we don't have we don't have rehearsal type thing and all of a sudden schools are shut down so i was like okay i don't think we're having rehearsal anymore <laughs> and everyone kind of thought okay we'll see you all maybe in april maybe in may <laughs> lo and behold <laughs> never again maybe i don't know but 
originally, you know, we kind of just put a pause on it. We were doing five shows at the time with different schools, and we just, we stopped. I made the decision to kind of just say, you know what, things are absolutely insane right now. Let's not really add to that by making it so, like, you need to practice every week. So we stopped, and we've been stopped since March. Uh, We haven't done anything (laughs) since. So... I think a lot of people would agree that sometimes when you hear theater, you don't really think of it as a business, but there's a lot of, you know, moving parts involved, and it's theater isn't just Broadway. It's, you know, small companies such as yourself that bring so much joy to communities. So Mm -hmm. what can you say about the importance of supporting not only small businesses, but small theater and arts companies? For us, a small business... The fact of the matter is, if we're not open, we're not making money, right? right? Um, If we're not doing a show, we're not making money. And that's really the bottom line of it is with bigger, you know, shows, with bigger theaters and stuff, they kind of have not necessarily reserve fund or backup money or whatever, if you will, but if they're closed for some time, most of the time they'll be able to stay you know open they'll be able to keep their properties they'll be able to you know keep their theaters etc for us if we're not open we don't have any money um that's how most small businesses run and so it's it's difficult because we haven't been open since march we haven't made any money since march and that's really tough on us so in the midst of the pandemic a lot of people have been kind of missing that social interaction and like yeah. joy you can get from going to see a live show so are you excited to get kids back on stage and back in rehearsals and people back in the audience of a big auditorium a thousand million percent <laughs> as much as you know doing online shows is a great kind of placeholder I think it'll always be a placeholder for shows there's something about you know theater and music that is There's such a live element to it that no online, you know, video or production or anything is going to ever really replace that. You know, when you're acting, if you're looking at a screen, right, you're not really getting that person's, you know, emotions or you're not really able to, like, really interact with someone versus if they're standing right next to you. That's a great interaction. You know, you can see everything about that person. I do look forward to that day when we all get to be back together and doing shows. Thank you for coming on and talking to everyone about this. Anytime. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Newsroom 18. If you would like to be interviewed for a future segment, please be sure to follow my social medias and DM me. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share the content, and stay tuned for next week's episode, which is Super Bowl themed.